Matej Morhic comes out on top of a mammoth hard day of racing. One from an escape ahead of Casper Asgren and Ben O'Connor. In the group behind was Jasper Philipson, the sprint king of this year's Tour de France. On site, Polony, stage 19, and what a whammy we had today. Early from the gun, an escape went free, and all the riders who haven't yet had success in this Tour de France, or if they're not a sprinter or not a climber, well, today was marked on their calendar because it was the last chance, the last chance for success in this Tour de France with a mountain day coming in stage 20 and stage 21, while the final on the Champs-Élysées in Paris. Mads Pedersen kicked off the escapes today when we left kilometer zero. We had a lot of attacks, a lot of counterattacks. In the group that formed well as nine riders, Tish Benot from Jumbo Visma, which has race leader Jonas Vingago, Matteo Trenton, he comes from UAE Team Emirates with Tade Pogacar, Julian Alaphilippe, Jack Haig, Niels Pollitt, Mads Pedersen, Zimmerman, Bargill, Campenarts, all big guns, all big ballers made the move and they were trucking along at a fast pace. The gap to that group, however, never did get far. This is modern cycling. In the old days, well, maybe seven years ago, once the escape was formed, the teams behind would sit up and say, well, that's that, let them go. Not today, not how things are raced these days. Now, any of the teams that missed the move, well, they're anxious to get up there in the move and they're attacking from the back. And that's what we'd see. We saw EF Education, Easy Post. We saw Israel Premier Tech. Those teams were pushing on the front to get something going to get their riders up in the move. Then disaster struck, 88 kilometers to go from one of the big guns in the group ahead, Nils Polet, the Bora Hansgrohe rider, had a mechanical. You see his chain snap, it snaps. He asked for service. Well, it's just the Shimano neutral car behind him, and it was chaos, chaotic. Niels Pollitt pulled over to the side of the road. They gave him the neutral service bike right away. Looked big, suited Niels Pollitt, ready to go. He hops on it, rides off. Wrong pedals. It had look pedals instead of the needed Shimano pedals that Niels Pollitt rides. They give him another bike. It has speed play pedals on it. That bike doesn't work again. And then they give him the third bike. He goes to get on that bike. It has the right pedals, Shimano pedals, which is what he needed, but the bike's too small. The seat post is too low. Nils Polet, frustrated, just goes over to the side of the road, gives up, has to wait for his Bohr Hansgrohe car, and that's it. He's out of the escape. Now the escape up front only has eight men, and Nils Polet has to go back to the back. And back in the back, well, it's Israel Premier Tech. It's EF, as I mentioned before, and it's also now Uno X who's putting in the energy to try to get something together to get their men up in the move. The riders are gone over the categorized climb. They are coming to an intermediate sprint. 75 kilometers to go, Jasper Philipson takes the intermediate sprint behind the eight men up front, but he keeps going, he keeps pushing. He pushes off a group that has his teammate, Matthew Vanderpool, had been doing all the lead outs for him in those stage wins that he gained along the way. Well, today he was trying to get Matthew Vanderpool up in the move and other teams were following that. And then we had this regrouping and a super group up front, a super group that would include Christophe Laporte, Pickcock, Betiol, Asgren, and Moorhitch were there. Also Vanderpool, Philipson, they made it up. Clark was there with his teammate, Canadian Hugo Hull, Corbin Strong, strong representation. Also sprinters, Gronewegen, and we mentioned before, Jasper Philipson, Mesjik was there along with Gronewegen, and four Uno X riders. This thing was a power man's move, and we're talking about a monumental strongman move because those riders included riders like Asgren, who'd won the Tour of Flanders, Morohitch, winner of Milan San Remo, strong riders like Tom Pickcock, and Alberto Bettio, also Tour of Flanders winner. We get down to this final 2.5 kilometers to go. What's amazing about the three riders who up front, all three of those riders were committing. Ben O'Connor, was the one perhaps least adapted to an eventual sprint finish with Asgren and Morohitch. They're better riders for the sprint. Back behind, the riders with Pickcock, Vanderpool, Jasper Philipson, those riders were all doing equal pulls, but they couldn't bring back this group. And you have to remember, Casper Asgren had just won the day before. They had him at 30 seconds with two kilometers to go. And we see behind Meskit, Pickcock, Betiol, Philipson, Laporte, Mats Pedersen, all those guys pulling through, trying to get something to happen, trying to get those three up front, but it wasn't to be. 
They come in into the final kilometer. Moro Hitch forces Kasper Asgren on the front. A very wise, cunning move by the Slovenian rider. Ben O'Connor does the best he can. He sets third wheel, riding back there, gives himself a little gap, and then around 500, 600 meters to go, he starts to rev up and launches hard over to the left-hand side to give himself as much gap as possible between the riders. We see 300 meters to go. We see 250 meters to go. Asgren starts to pull him back. Moro Hitch is burying deep on Asgren wheel. They pass him. Moro Hitch is now setting himself up for the sprint. He comes around the left side of Asgren, the Danish rider, and the two throw their bikes over the line, and immediately they call it a photo finish with Ben O'Connor taking third and back behind. We see the lead out of Vanderpool for Jasper Philipsen, who takes fourth on the day and more points for his green jersey, which he's surely going to win when we get to Paris in two days' time. But Morohitch decided the winner when they looked up at the photo finish. Morohitch already won two stage wins in 2021 gets the stage win, a third Tour de France stage win in his career, adding to Milan San Remo, a true superstar, picking up the third stage win of Bahrain Victorious in this year's Tour de France, adding to Peo Bilbao, adding to Walt Poole, so it's been a strong showing by the team. Casper Asgren upset, but has to be happy because he had the stage win yesterday. Ben O'Connor, well, his team had the win the other day with Felix Gall, but he would have been a little upset, but he knew he tried the best he could, the best of his possibilities to try to win today's sprint final. Remember, Ben O'Connor's no slouch himself, having won a stage in 2021 and finishing fourth overall the Australian. But for me, what was striking was the last ditch, the last time that all these riders had a chance to win a stage. It was a hard man, classic stage today that we saw with attacks all along. If you get a chance, Go back and watch it from kilometer zero to the finish because it was exciting. Seeing the guys that excel in the spring classics, the guys that have won classics, monuments out there fighting as much as they can to get their teammates or themselves in the winning move. And then finally, we saw that trio come to the finish line with Asgren, a Flanders winner, with Morich, a Milan San Remo winner, and dueling to the finish line with Morich throwing his hands up and celebrating in this last hard man stage available on tap in the 2023 Tour de France.